Last year, Jews Against the Occupation produced a video of our demonstration outside Max Brenner in response to the Palestinian campaign for boycotts, divestment and sanctions of Israel. And when our YouTube went up, we got a number of responses and we're taking this opportunity to respond. My name is uh, Guy and I'm from Jews Against the Occupation in Sydney. I'm Guy and I'm a member of Jews Against the Occupation in Sydney. My name's Michael Goldstein and I'm a member of JAO. Alice Beecham, Jews Against the Occupation. My name's Haskell, I'm a member of Jews Against the Occupation. Often people point out that Israel is a refuge for Jews throughout the world in case they are oppressed. And I find this quite ironic. For me to see Israel as a homeland, that is I have a right of return to Israel, and the poor Palestinians who were exiled from their homes and live in refugee camps, whether in Lebanon or Syria or Jordan and so on, have no right of return, seems uh, a travesty. A Jewish state and a democracy, there seems to be a contradiction here. I see roads which are prohibited to Palestinians, checkpoints throughout the West Bank affecting their daily lives. I see the demolition of not hundreds but thousands of Palestinian homes. The justice system in Israel allows for indefinite detention of Palestinians without trial as well as injudicial execution. Yet we in the West are asked to recognise Israel as a democratic state. It is not a democratic land. In Israel there are numerous laws that completely deny democracy. They are fascistic in their orientation. For example, it is now illegal to commemorate the Nakba. And also if you call for boycotts, divestment and sanctions, including in this very illegal settlement, it is grounds for civil action against loss of business and so on. Nuclear armed Israel is a rogue state. It's not just an ongoing disaster for the Palestinian people in the whole region, but it is also an ongoing disaster and an insult to the Jewish community globally. This phrase that I also knew from my childhood, a land with no people for a people with no land, sounded so beautiful. But it wasn't a land with no people. It's as false as to view Australia as a terra nullius, an empty land very much reminded me of the situation in Australia as far as the colonists were concerned the Aboriginals were also a non-people. Ten years ago Israel started to construct the wall or the separation barrier which goes over 700 kilometers and separates villages from their agricultural lands and makes the everyday life in Palestine a living hell. The wall does not separate Palestinians from Israelis. The wall is another way in Israel's mechanism of forcing people off their land to have new lands for settlements. And if you look at the root of the wall, it does not go on the green line. It in fact cuts off Palestinians from Palestinians and it blocks freedom of movement. It takes their land and it's a total further dispossession. It's continuing the work of 1948. I've come to the conclusion that the only peaceful way of shifting the way the right-wing government in Israel is moving is through the use of BDS. Called for by many, many civil society groups in Palestine to isolate Israel until it abides by international law. The boycott, divestment and sanctions is a peaceful method which is somewhat like was used in South Africa to change the regime away from apartheid. I was very strongly involved in the South African struggle and it slowly has dawned on me that Palestinians live an apartheid-like existence. If you're in the highest caste of a Jewish Israeli citizen, you can enjoy liberal democratic rights. If you're a Palestinian that were born as an Israeli citizen, you might have official equal rights, but in every parameter you'll be discriminated against. If you're born in uh, East Jerusalem, then you have a special uh, position. If you're born in the West Bank, uh, then you don't have any right to vote to the people that actually rule you. You live under a military dictatorship. And if you're real unfortunate and born as a Gaza Palestinian, you also live in the, wor in the world's largest jail, largest concentration camp. The Zionist dream is reliant and synonymous with ethnic cleansing and the growing apartheid practices. 
critics say we should go to Israel-Palestine and see what's happening. I've been at least half a dozen times to Israel-Palestine and I've worked with Israeli peace activists there and, and the Palestinians and there are many activities in solidarity with the Palestinians every week as they fight against the encroachments of the wall on their land and on their livelihoods. The whole occupation is designed to choke their ability to have a livelihood. My parents were German Jewish refugees. They were committed to righting wrong. I think it was behind my support for oppressed people throughout the world. But it slowly dawned on me that I just knew nothing about the Palestinian people. When I was a kid, I'd go to other Jewish families and I always see the JNF, the Jewish National Fund little box, collecting money. And I always thought that was a nice thing because it it built forest in Israel. It's only recently that I've realized that the JNF was just integral to dispossession of Palestinian lands. That when people were cleared away and pushed into exile, their villages were bulldozed down and it was the JNF that planted trees where these villages used to be. I've started having to learn about, in many ways, the hidden history of, of Israel. This is one of the comments. Oh, please, the people here are Jews. Maybe they're Jews. They're misinformed, brainwashed idiots. Why aren't they in synagogue right now? Now, this is a favorite tactic of those in the mainstream who support the continuing occupation of Palestine. It's, it tries to say that some people are Jewish and some people are not. I was bar mitzvahed, my brother was bar mitzvahed, my son bar mitzvahed, all in the same synagogue in the eastern suburbs. I was an active member of Habanim. I became a madrich for many years. My family on my father's side is Mizrahi and on my mother's side is Safadi. We are members of the Jewish community. We will not let them define who is Jewish and who is not. We come from proud Jewish tradition and we speak out of that tradition of social justice. Ilan Pape, the renegade Israeli historian, was asked what was the effect of his policies on his faith and he simply replied that the further he distanced himself from his former uh, avowal of Zionism, the more of a Jew he felt. I just can't uh, understand why when Jews have said for many years never again that they can only think of that this should never again happen to Jews rather than broadening that out to say that should never again happen to any human being. Uh, we are fighting for justice, we are fighting for justice for everybody. Reject apartheid, reject Zionism, stand up for people's rights. Amod neged tzionot ve neged apartheid, amod imdu be'ad zchoyot ha'adam ve be'ad zchoyot ha'palestinim uh, because only with the one person, one vote, equal system, we can really challenge apartheid and build a new equal society in Palestine.